Hello and welcome to Hattie the Creator. I am Hattie and today we are going to jump into some 3D modeling in Sculpt GL. So let's get started. First thing we're going to do is open up your web browser and type in Sculpt GL. Click that first link and here we are. We're already in the application. So as you can see, this is accessible to anybody. There's really no excuse if this is something you've wanted to learn. You can just jump in and start playing with the tools immediately. And before you're no you know it, you'll be 3D modeling and creating your own characters in 3D space. And they are also very helpful in creating 2D illustrations and character designs as you will see in this video. So now I have opened up a new project and I am starting my character. And really, I don't know what I want to do. I just know I want to create a character face, so I'm just throwing out some initial forms and I almost always start with eyes, uh, in this case just eye sockets because there's no eyeballs in there. So I'm just throwing some clay on, uh, pushing things around with the move tool and really just experimenting and seeing what comes from this clay and letting the clay kind of speak to me as I work with it. Uh, it's really forgiving at this point. You can throw some clay down, and as you can see, it's not very attractive. Those things can be smoothed out really easily. It used to be that you have all these primitive tools to work with clay, and now it's really nice to just jump in um, and just use all these different tools. This tool I'm using now is a crease tool, which is very helpful. Another thing that is awesome with digital clay is you don't get your hands all filthy. Um, as you can see, too, it's so easy to manip manipulate this. I just move the eyes further away from each other, and right now I'm kind of giving them a Thanos chin, put some lines down the middle. That wasn't intentional, it just kind of reminded me of Thanos as I was going. Um, I'm liking the shape of the face, just changing some proportions, making those eye sockets a little deeper. Uh, really, it's just playing around and just seeing what feels right to you. At this point, I kind of have an, a happy accident that happens on this head. I have this little divot area that I accidentally left that ends up turning into some sort of alien amphibian ears. Um, and right now I'm pulling out some neck so I can have that in the illustration later on, have some form to him. I think the most important part of this whole process though is just to have fun with it, to not feel like you have to measure up to anybody else or anything else that you've seen, just to experiment and really just play with it, be forgiving of yourself and just give yourself time to learn and to get better. I wasn't as good as I am right now at the beginning. You know, I still have plenty of room to improve. Just enjoy the whole process. So at this point I want to remesh, which redoes the polygons so they're all roughly about the same size. And I'm also adding polygons which enables me to add more detail, like the example I just showed on screen. And then I am throwing in some eyeballs, which is really easy to do. You just add a sphere, you scale it down to the size you want. Uh, I threw a white material on there just to make more like an eye. And once you have it in place, just using the X and Y axis, you just duplicate it and drag it over and there you go. Some quick and easy eyeballs. So now I'm going to just polish it up a little bit. I'm adding some more definition to the lips. And as I am doing this, I am realizing that this guy has a happy kind of Abe expression on his face. He's smiling. And I wanted more of an ominous, kind of a scarier or a villainous type of character. So I'm kind of turning that smile into a frown, flipping it around. And I want to add some nostrils, kind of like a snake nostril right here between the eyeballs. I think that looks really cool. Just adding some more polish, uh, more little detail around the eyes. And I want to add some wrinkles like people have. We have a lot of wrinkles on the side of our eyes right here, just like this. Uh, just more details, making it look more like a polished, rounded character. Make it more believable. Uh, more rivets and divots, and making his skin look like he's lived a bit. And this part right here kind of reminded me of a stormtrooper. Just that little section of his face. I'm not sure what it is. Maybe his jawbone has some lines or details extruding out. Uh, just adding some more to his neck. Giving him a look around. This is the part I talked about earlier with his ears reminded me of a frog's ears. Uh, maybe they're not ears exactly, but some sort of sensory device or, you know, organ on his body that enables him to hear or at least detect vibrations. I don't know, whatever it be. And this is the kind of built-in skin texture. I'm just throwing in some texturing on him, uh, making it look a little cooler, playing with some of the materials until I find something I'm happy with. And at this point, I switched the song over to a more alienish, ominous song. I did a video with my kids 
where they fight aliens, and I use this song, and it reminds me of that. It's funny how YouTube kind of recycles a lot of the same music with what they have available, and different songs will remind you of different videos, because we all use the same things. So at this point, I went with the red clay material. I thought it looked the coolest on him. And SculptGL has a lot of really cool built-in tools, and this one is the, the painting tool. And I have a lot of fun just kind of dabbling with it. It doesn't let you do super fine detailing work or anything. It's kind of pixelated if you zoom into it. But it's really cool to just throw on some initial colors, give you an idea of what you want your character to look like. It's really robust. You can uh, throw in different colors on top of each other and make them uh, more opaque and transparent and build on each other. Right now I'm just throwing in some darkers in the darker areas and highlighting some of the, the spots that extrude kind of coloring him as I would, you know, like a 2D character, uh, cell shading a little bit, which you don't really have to do since, you know, lighting and form take a role in all of this as well, but it looks cool, making his eyeballs black, it's kind of a cop-out for the alien character, aliens have the black eyes, and it's easier because you don't have to, you know, do the pupils and stuff, this whole eyeball's a big pupil. Another thing I like about this color select tool is when you choose a color, it shows the model, the whole model as that color. It gives you an idea of what it'll look like before you actually start applying it to your model, which is very helpful. You can see it bouncing around a lot. That's what it's doing, just showing you a sample of what the color you choose will be. And at this point, I'm pretty happy with how it looks. I'm just doing a couple more highlights, and then I am going to take some screenshots of different angles, and then I'm going to pull them in to Photoshop. Okay, so we've made the jump over to Photoshop now. I'm just going to, you know, polish them up a little bit, add some more details, I really make them pop as a 3D character, and just make them look a little bit more badass, throw a little fake body on him, uh, just make him stand out as a, as a character, like a, like a concept type character that I would turn in for some concept work. Um, I always like to add this backlighting. I think it makes characters just really look badass and just pop and look ominous, kind of like the uh, walking away from the explosion type thing you see in all the movies. It just really makes his face look three-dimensional, uh, highlighting these these parts that would reflect light if there's a strong light behind them. What I'm doing now is I'm adding a color burn and a color dodge layer. The color burn will make the darker areas darker and the dodge will kind of brighten things up, making his eyes look a little bit more fleshy, making it look like he has some skin and adding some wet highlights, the more damp areas, the lips and things. Just making things pop and look more organic. Uh, he's a, a living character, a living creature. I'm going to play with the background a bit, try to make it look cool, make him stand out more, add some light in the area where the light would be coming from. Right here, that's what I'm doing. So, just kind of making it look like a, a finished illustration, polishing it up. And there's no right or wrong way to do this, just experiment and see what looks good to you and have fun with it. And I think it goes without saying that I've sped this up quite a bit. Uh, I think the whole process took me about two and a half hours from opening up SculptGL to the point where I where I call this illustration done. Right now I'm throwing in a really basic body and I end up trashing that one and going with something different. I like this a little better. The shoulders are kind of more alien-ish. This, uh, this body kind of made me think of like a Starfleet captain from Star Trek or something with the red jacket. It's like a, a Spock alien or something. I don't know. I liked it. I'm just doing super basic body, adding some values to kind of give it a little bit of definition, but I want the face to be the highlight, the thing to, that you look at, you know, the focal point, and the, the body will just kind of be complementary of the face. I want eyes to look at the face, and so here's the final piece of what I ended up with. It's kind of cool to think that this all started with a ball of clay, and you guys can do this too. And here is the final rendering of the different angles of the face. Well, that's our video for today. Thanks so much for joining me. And it would be really cool if you could check out one of my other videos as well. And please consider subscribing if you like this video and want to see more creative videos in the future. I do all sorts of creative projects and would love to have you join me.
Take care, guys.